Father, we thank you this morning that even as your word declares that as the deer panted for the waters, our soul, it longs for you. And Father, this morning, uh, we lift our voices, we lift our hands uh, in adoration and exaltation. And Father, we just begin to thank you. We begin to glorify you. We begin to honor your name in this place, Lord God, for you alone uh, deserve the praise. Uh, you alone deserve glory. You alone uh, deserve all of the honor. And Father, we thank you that you are majestic in all of your ways. Father, we thank you that you are strong. We thank you that you are glorious and all powerful. God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are magnificent. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that there is none like you, that you're the King of kings, and that you're the Lord of lords, that you are the lion, and that you are the lamb. Father, we thank you that you are the one that was crucified for us, and we thank you that, God, you are the one where your blood was shed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are Jesus, that you are Lord, that you are master. Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you are not only God, but you are Lord over our lives. And Father, we give you praise. We lift our voices in this place, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we just begin to declare your goodness. We begin to declare your faithfulness. We begin to declare your oneness in all of the earth, in the name of Jesus. And Father, this morning, we join in with the heavenly host. And we begin to declare, Father, in the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous they run to it and they are safe father we think that there is safety in the name there is victory in the name there is salvation in the name there is peace in the name there is joy in the name there oh god in the name of jesus there is provision in the name come on say pray father in the name of jesus father we thank you for your name we think that your name is lifted up in the earth in the name of jesus father we thank you lord god even this morning oh father for the faithfulness found in your name we thank you for the kindness that is found in your name in the name of Jesus and father one thing that we have desired and that that shall we seek and that is to dwell in the house of the Lord and so father as we're gathered here right here in Sacramento Boulevard in the name of Jesus father we thank you that your presence it resides in the midst of us in the name of Jesus father we thank you that your presence is not limited to this cafeteria but father we thank you that today you dwell among men you dwell among in the temples of men come on pray father in the name of Jesus we thank you that you reside in these temples you reside in these mortal bodies in the name of Jesus and as your earthen vessels father we begin to lift your name on high in the name of Jesus father we give you glory praise and honor we thank you and there is none like you in all of the earth you are our defense you are our shield you are our buckler you are our healer you are our deliverer and father we just don't declare that with words but we think of that today huh? in the today 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 open the my soul Rebecca the Lord my told you today 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 huh? you shall show huh? yourself strong huh? you shall show huh? yourself mighty you shall show yourself glorious huh? you shall show huh? your might in the earth huh? even in this place today in the name of Jesus come on pray huh? father we think of that today huh? as the people cry huh? that as we lift our voices huh? even on one of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God. Oh, Father, for the strength of the mighty. We thank you for the strength of the mighty. We thank you for the strength of the mighty. We thank you that you are our stronghold. In the name of Jesus, that you are our stronghold. You are our anchor. Hey, hey, hey. You are our defense. You are our sword. Hey. You are our shield. You are the word. In the name of Jesus, you are the word. You are the beginning. You are the end. You are the alpha. You you are the Omega. You are sustainer in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray today. Huh? Let there be. Huh? Let there be. Huh? Let there be. Huh? Heaven on earth. Huh? In the name. Come on, saints, pray. We follow the claim in the name of Jesus that there shall be. Huh? There shall be the manifestation of your presence huh? in the midst of us. Huh? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you build. Huh? You build. Huh? You build. Huh? Even among us today. Huh? In the name of Jesus, we we think that your word shall come forth with power. We think that your word shall come forth with conviction. We think that your word shall come forth with authority in the name of Jesus. For your word declares that it is not in word only, but your kingdom is in power. And so, Father, for that we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. 
Father, we magnify you. We magnify the name. The name that is above every name. The name that is above sickness. The name that is above. The name that is above sickness and disease. The name that allows us, God, to come boldly before your throne. And Father, your word declares that if we ask, it shall be given. That if we seek, we shall find. And God, today, we knock at the door. The door, the door, the door. It shall, it shall be open unto us in the name of Jesus. Come on, push in that place. It shall. We won't relent. Father, we pursue you with an everlasting pursuit. Father, we drink of your well. We drink of your goodness. We drink of the waters. We drink, oh Father, of your kingdom. Lift him up.
You have not seen it yet. You haven't seen his greatness yet. Oh, behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing in you, in you. Behold, I do a new thing. Yeah. Behold, I do a new thing. Eyes haven't seen.
new thing. Almighty God, hallelujah. Father, we come right now thanking you for the new. We thank you for you working in us, both so willing to do, to perform your good pleasure. We honor and adore you even in this season, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that the praises and the worship have gone up before you. We declare that they are as the sweet fragrance in your nostril. We declare that you receive appeasement, Lord God, that you are satiated by our praise, that you are satiated by our worship. The lifted hands, Lord God, the exalting of you with our voice. We thank you and we honor you today. Lord God, we just ask you to have free recourse in this place. Holy Spirit, we invite you in the more. We thank you for being among us and in us in Jesus' mighty name. We love you and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give it up for this worship team. Hallelujah. Oh, bless him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Children's Church, you are dismissed at this time. Children's Church, we do have Children's Church. Shout out to my wife who's over Children's Church, Pastor Dez, doing a great job with the young ones, hallelujah, even developing curriculum um, for those that are in the teens, and they've been studying the Holy Spirit, and it's been a good run. Um, I get to talk to my little girl in the car on her way to school and just reinforce the Holy Spirit, and she's talking about a trinity. I'm like, What? I told her one day, I think you're more advanced than some of the adults. I think you know some stuff that adults don't know. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He has decided to reveal himself in three persons. Hallelujah. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit slash Holy Ghost. Both of the words are pneuma in the Greek. The breath of God is where you get your Hebrew word, ruach. It's the ruach of God, the breath of God. It's the English word where we get pneumonia, which is a breathing disorder, and the um, spirit or the apparition, that's why they also use ghost instead of spirit at times, is the Greek word pneuma, pneuma, hallelujah. Man is a spirit, man is a pneuma. He lives in a psyche, which is the soul, and he has a body, which is the soma, and so man is triune. So isn't it amazing that God makes us in his likeness and in his image? And he's three parts. He's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so that's an awesome thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we got some good word for you today. Oh, glory to God. Open up your Bibles to Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. We're going to be talking about vision casting today. And we're going to be talking about the vision of rivers part 2. Hallelujah. And so, um, man, I, I, I just believe we had a good time in the first service. I believe we did. And uh, I feel as if virtue has gone out of me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. My God. Um, I went back in the back and I was telling myself, I said, I brought a change of clothes for afterwards because I knew I would sweat. But I have to remember to bring some type of change in between. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. So, um wardrobe we're gonna have to get worship team and preachers with wardrobe hallelujah glory to god so we can have some change of clothing in Habakkuk chapter 2 Habakkuk chapter 2 i want to start by telling you guys um when i was coming up when i was young in the faith just gotten saved my then pastor we had a building project and um, we wanted to procure some land in the Riverdale community. I was so enthused about this that I actually moved to Riverdale. I wanted to be close to the church. And so I moved to Riverdale and I was in walking distance of the church. And so my pastor, I was telling the first service, my pastor was older um, in, in, in terms of from where we were as youth and his age. So we might have been like most of our congregation was early 20s. And pastor was like 55, 60 something. He was balding in the middle. He had his sideburns and everything. So he even had that older guy look, you know, and everything. And so it was like when he told us that we were going to move because we were having church in his living room. And so he told us we were going to get this Knights of Columbus building. And um, when he told it to us, it was just like it was like dad talking to his kids like this is what we're going to do. And so as a result. 
we started doing little things to um, get the building. And the Lord moved on me, and this is back in the early 90s. I got saved in 1989. I'm a product of Jackson State University. And so I got saved when I had went off to school. And um, I was going um, to the set, and the um, campus had 13 women for every one guy. And I wanted my share of all 13 of them. Hallelujah. But um, I went to the set one night, and the Lord got a hold to me, and um, he um, filled me with the Holy Ghost. And as a result of being filled with the Holy Ghost, I come home, I get up under my pastor, and I'm working this job, probably making back then about three thirty-five, three fifty-five an hour. And um, the Lord is moving on me to give $1,000. That was the first $1,000 that I ever gave. Hallelujah. Since that time, I've given numerous times in the $1,000 mark, and I'm looking to give 10000 plus now. And so um, God had moved on me to give into the vision. Now, it wasn't like we had a building fund or anything like that. God moved on me to give $1,000 into the ministry for the building that we were after. And so as a result, in seven years, somebody say seven, seven years, the building was gotten debt free. At that time, it was $195,000. He had went and sat down with them and he had told them that the Lord had need of this building. And they looked at him and he said, Reverend, we have need of $195,000. Over the 70 years that had elapsed, the building actually went up to $250,000. God blessed us. I mean, doors began to open. There were zoning issues that began to um, occur. And as a result of these zoning issues, ComEd had gave a stipend of $50,000 to our church and everything. And all type of things just began to manifest. But one of the things that I noted about that was that my pastor had runners. He had people that received the vision and they ran with it. I was one of those runners. I understood that we had a vision and I began to give into that vision. I began to do things to propagate that vision. Hallelujah. And so within seven years, we get the building and then there's a restaurant on the corner. Uh, my pastor had already owned the restaurant, which I was the manager of. And he says to the congregation, we're going to own the whole block debt free. And so the restaurant costed $20,000. So we went into that project, got the restaurant. We owned the whole block debt free, burnt the deed and everything. Glory to God. And we saw the vision come into fruition. And so when I got my own church, the church formerly known as Empowerment Christian Center that I merged here into Rivers, been here now for about four years. And so when we came together, one of the things that I thought about my old church was that we had vision, but we didn't really have a runner. We didn't have people that took on the vision and ran with it. People that just undergirded themselves with the vision and said, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to accomplish. This is how we're going to get it done. In Habakkuk 2 and 2, we're going to talk about vision casting and communicating vision effectively. In Habakkuk 2 and 2, it says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain. That word plain in the Hebrew, just as a quick synopsis, it means to explain it. Make it plain. Explain the vision. I believe that we've done that here. We understand that we have a piece of property over here on Sacramento and Harrison, and we understand that we want the building to spring forth out of it debt-free. We understand that said building is around three million some odd dollars, all right? So we know that the vision is that, and it's plain. It's been explained. Put it upon tables. Put it on stone so that it can glisten. Now, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more because when I saw that word glisten, I was saying to myself, what glisten? Glistens. What glistens? Well, last night I just happened to fall asleep with the TV on and the TV was glistening throughout the night. It was on while I was in the dark sleep. It was glistening. All right. Television. Television. There were certain images. There were certain visions that were glistening across the television as I fell to sleep last night. You'll catch that in a moment. It says that he may run, that he may run. Somebody say run. Somebody say, I'm a runner. That word run means to make haste. 
That don't mean you get vision and you kind of like moping and you moseying. When I heard the vision, I immediately went with my low income making self and gave my thousand dollars. Hallelujah. Didn't nobody have to tell me to get a thousand dollars. The Lord moved on me. He said, give a thousand dollars. Plus, there were some other things that I did in conjunction with running, hastening to the vision. He that readeth it, when you read it, you've been called to a specific task. When you get the vision, you must understand that you, somebody say me, somebody say me. See, because a lot of times when you talk corporately, everybody think that they call to the same situation in the same circumstance of the vision. But you got to understand that with vision, I don't know who you know. All right. And so you got to run with it and you got to do specifically what God is calling you to. You may be in the medical field. I ain't, I ain't rubbing elbows with doctors. You may be in law. I'm not rubbing elbows with lawyers. You may be in some profession where you come across somebody and just by telling them the vision, they give you a million dollars towards the vision. My little girl was asked to speak. She write books. She was asked to speak at this church. She said, man of God, you the father. Come on up here and have some words. You bishop, right? Yeah, bishop, come on up here and have some words. All right, so I come up to that podium, and I start having words and everything because I'm running with vision, right? And I say, we got a building project over here on Harrison and um, Spalding, Harrison and Sacramento. We got this building project, da, 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 da. They say, we want to give into that because what am I doing? I'm running with the vision. I'm talking about it. I'm telling others. I ain't in secret vision. I ain't in keep vision to myself mode. I'm opening up and I'm telling others about the vision. Listen, vision should be clear. Vision should be concrete. It should be tangible. We got a piece of land that we done stood on, worship on, gave on. And when Apostle Ken Tony then was here, we done put all type of stuff on the land. Hallelujah. He had something going on over there. We was working it. We had communion pulled into the land, bread on the land. We even had some honey put on the land, some salt put on the land. We was doing that thing. Hallelujah. They came to possess the land. We got tangible land, and it wasn't, wasn't no witchcraft to all, all you out there. wasn't no witchcraft. Hallelujah. He had scripture to back up everything he did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we went out there, and we was on the concrete of that land. It was tangible. The vision must be concise. It must be concise. That means it ain't got to be long and drawn out. Y'all know what we're doing. We're going to erect a debt-free building. All right? It's concise. It ain't got to be long and drawn out. And the vision must be compelling. It must be compelling. You got to be convinced. When I heard that my pastor wanted to get that bill, I was convinced. So I went into my coffers and I got out money to help. All right? So we want to bring out this point that you want to have the vision, number one. You want to have vision. And then number two, those that receive the vision become the runners. Those that receive the vision become the runners. Go to James chapter 1 with me. Go to James chapter 1 as we work our way through this. In James chapter 1, beginning at verse number 22, it says, but be doers of the word. Now, y'all allow me some liberty here. I'm going to play on these words here because it's biblical what I'm doing, but you're going to find out in the message when we get to the revelatory part. But I'm going to exchange word here for vision. And so this is going to read like this, but be doers of the vision. And not merely listeners to it, betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. See, there's a lot of folk that heard the vision, but you ain't doing nothing with the vision. So you pretty much ain't even a part of the vision. But because you come to this church, you think you in the vision. All right. Now, I want you to understand that, you know, you can hear vision and not do nothing with vision. Basically, you're not a part of the vision. You just occupying a seat until we walk into our next. Hallelujah. In verse number 23, it says, for if anyone only listens to the vision without obeying it and being a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror, for he thoughtfully observes himself, goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. Be careful of this. Be careful of looking and hearing about the vision and not doing nothing with it because then you become legends in your own mind. 
And see, a lot of times we want to revert back to old stuff. I done been with churches that always want to go back to old stuff. We ain't in the old. We in the now. We not back in 1996. We not back in 2008. We in the now. Rivers got a whole different look about it in the now. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So you can't get stuck on what was. We got to go forward. Is that all right? Go over here to Luke chapter 16 and 8. Luke chapter 16 and 8. I was real skeptical when the Lord gave me this scripture because, to be quite honest, I don't like this scripture. I really don't like it. I'm like, man, God, why did you, why did you throw us under the bus like this in this scripture? This scripture right here, I feel like it's just like, ugh, hallelujah. Y'all going to see why I don't like it in a minute. And verse number 16 and 8 of Luke, I know some of y'all, how can he say he don't like it? I don't like it. I can be honest with the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely. This is why I don't like it. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. The children in this world are wiser than the children of light. That's why I don't like it. Hallelujah. Because see, church folk, they want to pray, they want to dance, they want to scream, they want to shout, they want to do a whole lot of stuff, and they think something's going to fall out the sky a lot of time. They want to use Jesus as a genie. They want to sit in his lap like he's Santa Claus. They want three wishes and everything else. But when it comes to studying, when it comes to learning, when it comes to possession, see, the world going to go after their stuff. The world going to go after the cheese, the cheddar, the paper. They're going to chase it. They're going to get what they want. I've got most of my ministerial experience in prison ministry. Was doing prison ministry. I know a lot of ex-inmates. They out. They entrepreneurs. They got trucking company. They got business. They got entrepreneurship. And I know a lot of folks in the church still talking about, Lord, when you get ready, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. Five years down the line, Lord, where's my business? Lord, where's my new house? Seven years down the line, Lord, where's my husband? Ain't prepping, ain't preparing, ain't pursuing, ain't studying, ain't nothing. It says that the children of the world are wiser in their generation. When I looked up our wiser, they are more prudent. They are more cunning. They are more anxious about their particular business. When you start talking paper to them, bro can't hardly even talk. But boy, you start talking about, man, you got rapping potential. Uh, he'll start mumbling. He, boy, I'm gonna pursue that paper. I'm gonna do it. They done, they done took rap where it ain't even lyrical no more. They mumbling. Joker said, I'm going to make my mumble rhyme. I'm going to make this money. Do y'all hear what I'm saying today? They show more skill. They study more. They plan more. They contrive more ways. More ways. We just think, I'm just going to pray about it. I'm just going to pray about it. No, more ways. Go to the library about it. Go find a book about it. We got to come on up from this mentality like God is dropping stuff up out the sky and everything, man. God says he would bless the works of our hand. We got to put our hands to something. We got to put our hands to do something. This is what Apostle has been preaching on about the virtuous and extraordinary people. That people are virtuous. They do things with their hands. God will give them knowledge. God will give them wisdom and an understanding. Glory to God. We want things to come to back. Nasha, there's some money that God won't put in your hand because you couldn't handle it. Soon we start preaching the millionaire anointing. Everybody in here be running around. And then when we kind of narrowing things down, you won't even give a dime off a dollar. That's a tide, by the way. We start narrowing down the money, and you won't even give a dime off a dollar, but you'll be the main one in the line. Bless me to be a millionaire. You would die. Wouldn't even know how to handle a million dollars. Be financially corrupted and lose your soul. Do y'all hear what I'm saying today? I know when I preached this last service, we had these moments where people get quiet. It's okay. I'm going to keep preaching because it's true. Hallelujah. Folk don't have no type of learning. I was dealing with marriages. Um, me and my wife, we teach a lesson called Marriage Without Manuals. 
And so we're saying that marriages are being done with no type of book, no type of manual. People are getting married. They don't learn about relationships. They don't learn about treating husbands and treating wives. They don't learn about the sexual. They don't learn about the intimacy. They just go and they just do stuff in the body of Christ. But the world, they're going to study. The world, they're going to get plans. The world, they're going to find more ways to getting it done besides Rosha ba ba ba. They are wiser than the children of light because they work their systems. We don't even work our systems. You start telling the church to give, oh, I, I, I gave last time, I got to give again. Oh, my God, when this vision going to be over? They doing that again? Didn't they just do that two months ago? Well, we ain't, we ain't in the vision. We still here. <laughs> broadcasting, broadcasting. Let's talk about casting and receiving made simple. Broadcasting is the distribution of audio or video content to a dispersed audience via any electronic mass communication media, but typically one using the electromagnetic spectrum. And broadcasting is done in a one-to-many model. So whenever you ride down the street and there is a broadcast or a vision that is cast on a billboard, there are millions of cars that are passing that one to many model is casting vision to the many with only one billboard but see now we got stuff glistening all through our house we got television we got vision of what Procter and Gamble we got vision of what Jay's potato chips we got vision of Taco Bell we got vision -da -da -da. we got vision of loving it it's in every room of the house and in fact, around Black Friday and Christmas, we upgrade our vision runners. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Just because you run today don't mean you can't be qualified to be a runner tomorrow. Look around, rivers, it ain't the same it used to be. Just because somebody was qualified back in the day don't mean they're qualified today to be a runner. It don't mean that the same people you started this vision with are going to be the people you end with. You can be very much disqualified from the vision, murmurers and complainers. Here it was, Moses had vision, same vision that Joshua had. The vision is the promised land. We're going to get you from one place to the promised land. And Moses struck the rock. He missed out on the vision. He raises up Joshua, and with Joshua, he raises up a whole nother generation of runners. He said, oh, you jokers don't want to do this? Die in the wilderness, your dead bones and your carcasses. I'll raise up runners and I'll get my vision to come to pass regardless. If you want to murmur, if you want to complain, you can be disqualified from carrying out the vision. Well, here I go again. Uh-uh, no, no, don't do it grudgingly. Stop. I got to set up again. I got to tear down again. I got to set up Uh-uh, no, 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 stop that. You'll get disqualified. From the vid. Ah, ain't nobody else from the worship team showed up. Ah, apostle on vacation today and I got to preach. Ah. I'm the one got to pray. I'm the sub prayer today. Ah. You'll get disqualified from the vision. Murmuring and complaining about what you're doing on the way to vision. The runners can be changed. The vision remains the same. The runners can be changed. The vision remains the same. The runners can be changed. Ain't no, oh, shot. Ain't no one monkey stopping the show, y'all. Y'all better recognize this glory to God. God's a raise up a new nation. He'll raise up a people outside of a people. He'll take somebody from the uttermost to the guttermost and cause them to be the possessor of promise. Sitting around on your blessed assurance thinking you all that. God will show you you ain't none of that. Man.
He'll say, baby, bye. <laughs> Listen, television, television, television. We're talking about broadcasting. We're talking about broadcasting. And so television is a system for transmitting visual images. Say visual images. Television is a system for transmitting vision. Television is a system. So write the vision, make it play it. They that see it will run with it. So all of a sudden, I want that pizza deal from Pizza Hut because I keep seeing it. All of a sudden, I'm in Walmart and I want that latest robot because I keep seeing it. All of a sudden, I'm riding by Taco Bell and I'm U-turn because I hear, Dong! I'm going back to Taco Bell. I done heard a bell. I ain't even around a church steeple. I done heard a bell. Because that thing been casting vision around me all throughout the day. It's been casting vision around me all throughout the day. It's been casting vision around me all throughout the day. And see, these things are done surreptitiously. They're done below the level of consciousness. They're happening all the time. But it's only when we get to the church that we get upset because things are being repeated over and over and over and over and over and over again. But the world knows how to infiltrate your system. And it got you with a vision runner in every room. saying to yourself, man, why, why, why I'm having a Mac attack right now? Because vision is going on in every room. Going on in every room. And you wondering why I want a Big Mac now. You wondering why I want a quarter pounder with cheese, extra pickles, no onions. Am I making an order? Am I in the drive through Hallelujah. And so you're wondering. The television, the television. Vision is putting out vision, but we get upset when the church is reiterating the vision. We get murmuring, we start complaining when the church is going over and over the vision, but the vision should create a visual image. It should build something on the inside of you where when you walk past, when you ride past Spalding and Harrison, Harrison and Sacramento, you start seeing an erected edifice. You start seeing a debt-free building. You start seeing cars lined up. You start seeing parking spots. You start seeing people coming in by the groves. It's creating a vision on the inside of you. Listen, listen, listen. Television uh, reproduces on screens and chiefly uses to broadcast programs for entertainment, information, and education. The television is a device. It's the receiver. It's the receiver or it's the runner. So there are, there are the visionaries. Let me tell you about some of these visionaries. One such visionary is Turner Broadcasting System, TBS. Turner Broadcasting System holds the vision of a gentleman by the name of Ted Turner. So things that come across his broadcast channel that comes to your runner or your receiver are from that visionary. American Broadcast Company, ABC, also known as Disney. And the concepts and the thoughts and the visions and the images that Disney wants to put out, they in some controversial stuff right now because they're trying to indoctrinate our children with some of their stuff. They're trying to broadcast their vision across their runners. Then there's another one, the national broadcasting company, NBC, which is Comcast or Xfinity. The visionary is the Comcast. The runners are the televisions. Remember, vision should be clear. Vision should be concrete. Vision should be concise. Vision should be compelling. Whenever you broadcast, you're casting vision. Whenever you broadcast, now it's a broadcast. It's one to many. Just like in church. But see, when we come to church, we be putting different things on it, man. NBC, ABC, they can do this stuff all day long. Even some of us, we'll hear about what Disney is doing and we'll just be like, whatever. We'll continue to let it raise our children. Because it's a one to many, all right? So it's casting or it's throwing forth something in all directions at the same time. The radio or the television is broadcasting. It's a program that is transmitted over airways for public reception by anyone with a receiver tuned in to the right signal. 
So now let's bring it into us being the runners. Who is tuned in to the signal and the frequency of rivers? Who is tuned in to run with this vision? Who is tuned in to make this vision come to pass? To be the propagator of telling others about the vision. We can't just leave it up to a select few, y'all. Because, see, that's what tends to happen. We come through the front door and we see the same faces. We walk around the church and we see the same faces. I'm talking about the ones that's working in the vision. The ones that have been specified to do work in the vision. And so we start getting the understanding that, hey, maybe I'm just supposed to be a bench warmer. Maybe I'm just supposed to sit around and different things like that. No, you're not. not no, no, no. Because vision can be accelerated. We can speed up vision if we got, they told them in the book of Nehemiah, he said, I want you to work on the wall where your house is. The vision was to build the wall. And even though they had opposition, even though those folks was fighting them, he said, the vision is to build that part of the wall that's in front of your crib. Come on, can we bring it 2022? Nehemiah went to him like, bruh, look, where you stay? West side, where you are? I'm off of here over here on um, Cicero and Kilpatrick. All right, you in K-Town. All right, I want you to come outside every day, and I want you to build on this part of the wall. He's like, is that all right? He's like, yeah, we can do that. You know, me and my family are six. We can come out here, and we can build on the wall. So they come outside every day, and they build on the wall. They got the wall completed in 52 days, I believe it was. Because everybody lent to building up the wall. They got the wall built with opposition. They, they, got, they got the wall built even though they were having opposing things happen to them. We trying to build and folk dropping out of stuff. I, 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 I don't, don't want to be an usher no more. Why you don't want to be a, I just don't want to be an usher. I just, I just don't, I just, you know, I'm just, I'm going through a thing. Oh, okay. Why, why don't be one part of the... Um, greeters anymore. I, well, I just, I, I don't know. I lost my smile. They're coming up with all types of stuff. It's like I'm trying to, I'm trying to find out what is the, what is, what, what you, one day out of a week, one day, one day. What the, one, one, can somebody say one day? And then, oh, oh, I know what it is. You're working twice on that one day because the only reason the people that you see all the time is working twice because they have given themselves to the vision and ain't nobody, mm, Jesus. I know a man from Galilee, hallelujah. Let's move along here. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse number 2, it says, I want to read you a few translations here. In the Amplified Version, it said, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it plainly on clay tablets so that the one who reads it will will run. It's about running. I need somebody that's going to run. I need somebody that's going to see the vision and take it. Just like you saw Pizza Hut and you was in Pizza Hut line. Just like you saw McDonald's. The best part of waking up. Finish it. Then none of y'all plan on learning that song. None of y'all. None y'all learned on planning that song. You ain't sit down and study it. You ain't sit down and go over it. But that vision to put Folgers in every one of your cups kept coming across the television. It kept coming across the runners. The runners kept on playing it, and the runners kept on playing it. And now I can say it, and you just know it by heart. 588. Uh-huh, look at you. Look at you. The runners running all day. They glistening all day long, and you're hearing it. And you're hearing this down in your shondo. And that's the same way the vision should be of the house, hallelujah. It should be down on the inside of you where you know and you understand the vision. In, the, uh, in another translation, it said, The Lord answer me, write down what I show you. Write it clearly on stone tables so whoever reads it can run to tell others. Do y'all see how that one to many has worked? The one to many of Folgers has worked. The one to many to Empire Carpet has worked. And all the other things that are coming across the television, they're working. And so then when we get to the house of God and we want vision to work, we try to shut down a lot of time the promotion of the vision. And if you get in a certain group of people, they'll complain so much about the vision A 
Another translation, when he answered, the Lord told me, write out the revelation. Write out the revelation. That's why I could trade the word over in James for vision because vision is revelation that has been given to the visionary. He has seen it on the inside of himself and now he's casting it to the many. And now he's trying to get the many to see it on the inside of themselves. Y'all tracking with me. And the Lord said to me, write the answer on a billboard. Write the answer on a billboard. Put it big. Put it big and large and clear so that anyone can read it at a glance and rush. Get up off of your behind. Your blessed assurance. And begin to do something with the vision. Begin to operate in the vision. Begin to tell somebody about the vision. We don't need no secret service saints right through here because I don't know who you may come in contact with who can drop a meal, who can drop a hundred thousand. I don't know, but we need you talking about the vision. Vision, here's a definition for you. Vision is the act or the power of imagination. Somebody say imagination. Ooh, Jesus. Vision is the power of imagination. It's a supernatural appearance that conveys a revelation. Vision focuses on tomorrow and what our church wants to ultimately become. Vision is futuristic. Now, mission is different from vision. Mission focuses on today and what our church does to achieve our tomorrow. So you <laughs> mess me up sometimes with the saints because you get, you get off into faith and you don't know how to handle faith because now faith is the substance of the things you imagine. But those things that you imagine they find their evidence in the things that are not seen. So there is tangibility to faith. You ain't just walking off a cliff. You got to understand the workings of faith. You got to trust God no matter what. And the trust and the substratum or the foundation of your faith is God. It ain't just nothing. We ain't faking nothing till we make it. We faith in it all the way. Ain't no fake nothing in the body of Christ. God is a real God who backs up a real people when they give him a real trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. We walked into a $250,000 edifice debt free with a handful of people because we trust God. The vision wouldn't be imagination if it was not impossibility involved. There would be no need for you to imagine. If there, nah, Shabbatah. Listen, let's talk about some of these guys that imagine. I want to go and I want to talk to you about a runner. His name is Joseph. Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a vision that was placed on the inside of him by God. And as a result of having that vision placed on the inside of him by God, that vision had to be birthed, glory to God. And upon that vision being birthed, he partnered with God. Somebody say partnering with God. Do you know who Joseph was? Joseph was the Jesus of his day. No, 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 no. See, see, see. That's a high accolade. I said Joseph was the Jesus of his day. For God so loved the world. The then known world, Egypt, was on his way to die due to a famine. But it took the wisdom of a Jesus. Uh, it took the wisdom of a Joseph. Uh, it took the wisdom of a Jesus. Uh, it took the wisdom of a Joseph to save the then known world. Joseph was the Jesus of his time. Joseph had the vision that was presented to him in a dream. And Joseph began to cast vision to Pharaoh, the big house. Big house said, I can't handle this. He says, I'm going to let you handle this because your God know what he's doing. He put all the things that had to do with us. Joseph was so in command that when the people ran out of money and they came to him, Joseph initiated slavery on a legal scale. 
They said, Josu, we don't have nothing to give you. He said, give me your hard work. He said, in fact, I'm going to cause you to keep Egypt as one of the wealthiest and one of the greatest nations on the planet. I'm going to give you grain. You take some for yourself and you give 5% back into Pharaoh. He said, not only am I going to save you, but I'm going to sustain you. Hallelujah. Oh, he'll keep you if you want to be kept. Joseph, as a result of being a runner of vision, was preserved in favor. There is a blessing to the runner that will partner with God for the vision. God will favor, nah, God will favor, God will favor you. God will cause you to be the savior of your block. God will cause you to be the savior of your family. God will cause you to be the savior of that knucklehead son, that knucklehead daughter. God will cause you to be the savior in your environment. God will cause you to save your co-workers and everybody around you. There's a blessing for partnering with the favor of God. There's a blessing for partnering with the vision of God. God will cause you to be the head and not the tail, always above and never beneath. Let's, let's, let's look at another um, runner. His name is Abraham. Abraham was a runner. Sometimes God will give you a vision that's so much bigger than you. So here comes Abraham, the runner. What's the vision, God? He's like, man, I'm going to give you seed, and it's going to be so expansive. I'm paraphrasing now because of time. He says, Abe, I want you to go, and I want you to, um, I just want you to walk through the dust. And so y'all know Abe ain't got shoes like we got. He got them shoes like, um, like um, princess wearing the day, them sandals. And so he's walking around in the dust. And dust getting all on his feet. And he say, Abraham, look at the dust. Watch this, watch this. This is imagination. He said, look at the dust on your feet. He said, yo, descendants are going to be like the dust on your feet. And because he wasn't wearing shoes like we wear, Every day that he looked and took off his sandals, he saw nations. His imagination caused him to see nations. God set him up on the second time. He said, not only that, I want you to look to the stars. Y'all know it's going to be night. Every day he lived, it was going to be night. This is his television. He got to run it every single day. He said, look to the stars in the sky. He said, your descendants, he said, they're going to be like the stars in the sky. Abraham, I can imagine Abraham laying on his back one day. He's like, oh, there's Mishpaka, and there's um, Joni, and there's Lonnie, and, there, and he's trying to name the star. And then he wake up, he go back to bed the next night, he get a vision. He see his babies on the stars hallelujah because the vision was bigger than him glory to God not only that was the vision bigger than him but when he partnered with God God caused him to bring stuff out of barren places where have you left what God has given you today because Abraham and Sarah Sarah's womb was a tomb with nothing coming up out of there baby but Abraham began to do what God told him to do and he partnered with God for vision and as a result of partnering with God for vision God Cause the dead place to bring forth life. I'm telling you, when you partner with the vision of God, God will cause you to bring life out of dead places, barren places, weak places, impotent places. God will cause you to bring forth much fruit when you partner with His vision. You've been sitting around here complaining about vision. Vision is an opportunity for you to overcome. Vision is an opportunity for you to be triumphant. Vision is an opportunity for you to excel. Ah, Glory to God. Vision, 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 vision. Taking off his shoes and them my children right there. Woo -hoo! on the bed at night. Them my babies. My babies. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, I'm going to make you the father of a multitude. I believe God was showing him two types too. In the natural, on the ground, he was showing them the Jewish people. He said, I'm going to bring the Jews out. 
And then in the spirit, he was showing them a celestial people, a people that's high above the natural, a people in the spirit. That's you and me, just in case you didn't know it, because the Gentiles were engrafted in. God calls out of a barren place for a people that wasn't even a people to become a people, for a people that wasn't even a people to become productive, for a people that wasn't even a people to become fruitful. Everything was dead. Abe was dead, Sarah was dead, everything was dead, but God knows how to resurrect a partner with vision. He was working his imagination. He was seeing things because vision is the act or the power of imagination. Hallelujah. Let's look. Let's look at imagination right quick. Hallelujah. I told them this in the last service. They, they thought I was silly and everything. But uh, can you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Can you tell me how to get to that street where Grover is? Can you tell me how to get to the place where the grouch is? Do 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 do. Do 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 Elmo's world. Can you tell me how to get where Elmo is? Huh? Can you can you tell me how to get there? <laughs> Look here. That 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 place don't even exist. That place is somebody's imagination. But 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 let me read you something about imagination and how powerful it is. I, I did some research. And it says Sesame Street is now a $100 million enterprise with 5 million subscribers on its YouTube channel. And last June, bosses signed a huge deal with Apple to create new content. This happened in February 6, 2019. And Imagine Community is now making $100 million. Don't you tell me what God can't do when we begin to imagine, when we begin to dream, when we begin to see what God is is put down on the inside of us when we go and stand on the corner and see a place it resurrected and erected out of the dust. Don't you tell me what God cannot do when God begins to use the imagination. The Bible says now faith is the substance of the thing hoped for. That word hope can be the same word imagine. Now faith is the substance of things that you imagine. If you can see it in your eye on the inside, God can bring it to fruition on the outside. If you can see it on the inside, God can bring Bring it into the natural on the outside. But you got to see it. This man started imagining. Sesame Street came on the scene November 10th, 1969. Raise your hand in the place if you never heard of Sesame Street. It has transcended generations. An imagined place that don't even exist. You can't even find it on the map. There is no big bird. One, two, three, four. There is no count. A place that don't even exist is worth a hundred million dollars. The power of that man's imagination has transcended generations. The power of that man's imagination, justice going to grow up and she going to know about Sesame Street. She going to be rocking with the latest character. It might be Elmo's son, El Elmo Jr. They getting ready to bring out content to a whole nother generation. And they backed by Apple. Apple ain't stopping for nothing. Listen, imagination, 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 imagination. Now faith is the substance of the things you hope for. It's the evidence of the thing that is not seen. In the Amplified Version it says faith is the assurance. It's the confirmation. It's the title deed. I want you to stop thinking that when you operate in faith, you're just stepping out on nothing. That's, that's not it. That's not it. You're stepping out on God and God is everything. Y'all thought Jesus only walked on the water. Peter walked on the water. What did Peter walk out He walked out on the word come. I believe come was under his feet. C-O-M-E. He took another step on come. 
and another step on come. It wasn't until he started seeing the winds and the waves that he started to sink. The thing that he had once overcome began to cause him to become submitted to it because he took his eye off of the king of glory and he put his eye on the circumstance and the situation. Take your eyes off of the million. Take your eyes off the three million and put your eyes on the imagination of God. What is God saying? What is God saying about your business? What is God saying about your entrepreneurship? What is God saying about you? Stop looking at things in the natural and put your eyes in faith. Last thing, and I'm out of time. The people came together to build the Tower of Babel. Yeah, that's how we've been seeing it because that's how they talk about it in the church. But the exact scripture said they came together to build the city and the tower. I'm talking about partnering with vision. When the people had to come together to build a city and a tower, that means they needed concrete. That means that mom and Paul and them had to open up a concrete shop. Their entrepreneurship had to open. In fact, concrete shops started opening up all over because they needed enough concrete to build a city and a tower to the heavens. They needed slime. They needed mortar. So the people that partnered with the vision, they had to have those things. Wait, 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 wait. I know I'm not getting a lot of amens right here because people think, oh, the Tower of Babel, that's a bad thing. He confounded the language. Stop! You done went too far in the story. Let's just talk about when they had the vision and they had to build it. And let's talk about when God was hovering over it and God gave credence that they could do it. And where did it come from? It says, God talking to the Godhead. Uh, word? Yes, Father. Uh, Holy Spirit? Yes, Father. What these people, listen, what these, listen, what these, listen, what these people have imagined. They have the power to do what they have imagined. They have the power to bring to pass what they have visioned. The images that are set before them. They see a tower all the way up to us. And we're going to have to stop them by making them confused in their language. Now, that's the part y'all like. But wait a minute. That means that everybody that partnered in that vision. They got produce, they got fruit, they got something from that because they had to open up the shop. You had to cut, you had the brick layer shop opened up in that day. You had the brick cutting shop open up in that day. The folks that now make graving stones and stuff like that. You had the stone cutting shop. You had all type of masons and everything else. that You had all type of carpentry that opened up in that day. Because all those people partnered to create that vision. Come on and stand to your feet today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will rise and we will partner with the vision. We will see what God has commanded us to see. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, invoke our imagination, God. Cause us to see again. I'm reminded of Elijah, Lord God, when he had prayed and he said he saw the cloud as a fist and he told him to go again. Father, we come again. We come again, Lord God, to be re-energized. We come again, Lord God, to be, Lord God, the people that you are calling to walk in vision, to walk in purpose, to walk in destiny. We know our mission, Lord God. We're creating environments to get people saved, to get people delivered, and to know the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord God, we step even further into the water based upon your commandment to come. You said, come, and here we are, Lord. We can't see it in the natural eye, but in the spirit it's erected. We can't see it with the natural eye, but in the spirit it's already done. We can't see it in the natural eye, but we partner with your plans and your purposes. No more complaining, God. We repent of every complaint. We com repent of every murmur. We repent. God, show us each and every individual part. Show us what our parts are, God. And may we function and perform our parts, Lord God. And Father, 
We won't weary. Listen at this part. We won't weary. Because see, many people are saying they're weary when you ain't tired yet. There's a supernatural strength that comes from partnering with this vision. People were walking around walls. People were going through the desert, through the wilderness. People were doing all types of things. And we come to church one or two times and we say we're weary, we're worn, we're tired. Change our mentalities, Lord. Get us to where we carry vision and we bring vision into fruition. Father, I thank you that we will be the ones. We will be the ones that will see the fulfillment of all that you have for this house. I thank you for erecting the house of prayer. I thank you for the visionary, Apostle Gardner and Prophetess Yolanda. And I thank you for these runners, rivers of living water. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's welcome Sister Moret as she comes to take us further with our giving. story, but I thank God for it. Hallelujah. It has brought me to where I am right now, and it helps me to stand firm on God and who he is. He's never left me. Never. Never. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. through every trial. I just, I thank you, Lord. I don't know if y'all been through some struggles, but God has been good, and I know it's just not to me. Hallelujah. 